Hello and welcome to a paediatric lumbar puncture video created by the SimEd team at Children's Hospital Belfast. You can follow us on Twitter at SimEdRBHSC. Paediatric lumbar puncture is a commonly used and necessary diagnostic and therapeutic tool. However, it's a challenging procedure and when unsuccessful, it may have potential implications on the patient and family, such as distress, but equally the need for a repeat, empirical treatment or prolonged hospital stay. For the clinician, it may lead to decreased procedural comp confidence and may impact on their future competence. By creating this simulated video, we hope to give you all a structured, safe approach to improve your likelihood of obtaining a successful interpretable CSF sample. We'll go through the procedure, some common troubleshooting issues and special tests such as manometry. Okay, let's get started. Prior to starting the procedure, there are a few essential things that you need to check. First off, it's essential to check that the patient is clinically stable to have this procedure done. This includes checking the patient's observations and a succinct focused clinical examination. Prior to starting the procedure, there are a few essential things that you need to check. This includes the patient notes, a patient information leaflet and specific equipment for the procedure, including an appropriate cleansing solution, lumbar puncture needles, sterile drape, sterile gloves, mask, apron, universal container bottles, some meat pour dressing, a sharps disposal box, and appropriate forms and labels. Informed parental consent is essential for this procedure. We suggest discussing with the parents the reasons why you would like to carry out the lumbar puncture, the benefit of the test, some common complications and the technique and procedure itself. Following this, you're now ready to begin your procedure. Prior to beginning the, any procedure, it's important that you consider and have the appropriate level of supervision, the appropriate staff members and equipped clinical environment, and vitally an appropriately trained holder for the lumbar puncture. Having gathered a trolley and cleaned it appropriately, first off, put on an apron and mask as demonstrated. You should clean your hands appropriately using the seven step technique. At this time, ask your colleague to assist you by opening the sterile pack on the clean trolley. Following this, your assistant can then provide your sterile gloves, ensuring that it is the correct size and fit, and also open the cleansing solution and other equipment needed, doing so in a sterile manner. Other equipment that should be exposed at this stage is the pore dressing and the appropriate lumbar puncture spinal needle. At this stage, it is important to clarify with the clinician that is the appropriate size and length of sterile needle. Pediatrics, generally this is a 22 or 25 gauge beveled spinal needle with stylet. The standardized sizes in an infant needle is 38 millimeters. A useful way of calculating the expected or estimated depth is to use the attached formula. So anticipated depth in millimeters equals 0 0.4 times the weight of the baby in kilos plus 20. This formula can estimate the distance from the skin to the subarachnoid space and may be useful when trying to differentiate between needle size. Use of a non stylet needle should be avoided Prior to the procedure, it's important to obtain a blood sugar level. Having checked the blood sugar, you want to ensure that the patient's observations remain stable and it is then appropriate 
to administer pain relief, such as sucrose, for an infant patient. Appropriately positioning the patient is of vital importance in a pediatric lumbar puncture. If you're performing the procedure in the left lateral position, perform with the child lying on their side and curl into the fetal position, but it's important to avoid over flexing the neck. In a neonate, consider a seated position with the legs flexed at the hips, which potentially may minimize the risk of apneic or hypoc. With the patient in the appropriate position, begin to clean the exposed area. This is best done by starting centrally at the target intervertebral space and moving cylindrically around laterally until you have fully cleaned the skin overlying the vertebral bodies and spaces and extending to the anterior superior iliac spine. Following this, it's important to let it dry for around 30 seconds. A fully sterile approach may be helped by a sterile drape underneath your patient and you then proceed to identify your landmarks. This can be aided by using sterile gauze to lo locate the positions of both anterior superior iliac spine and fill in the intervertebral spaces. An imaginary line can be drawn between the top of the iliac crests to intersect the spine at approximately the L3, L4 space. This is known as Touffier's line and we tend to aim for the L3 to L4 interspace in paediatric lumbar puncture. Following this, it's important to prepare your lumbar puncture needle. needle. When you are ready to continue your procedure, it is vitally important that you then ask your assistant to hold the baby slightly firmer than previous to ensure that the baby does not move significantly during this procedure. Again, you can recheck your landmarks with your thumb identifying the target intervertebral space. Prior to insertion, it's important to orientate the needle bevel parallel to the spine rather than inserting perpendicular. Employing this technique is reported to separate rather than dissect longitudinal dura mater fibers. On your approach, it is important to maintain the stylet needle perpendicular to the patient, aiming in the general direction towards the level of the umbilicus. The technique should be done in a gradual, smooth motion to improve your likelihood of su success and decrease the likelihood of trauma. When you have successfully negotiated through the intervertebral space into the subarachnoid space, you may or may not feel a slight pop or give, at which point you can remove the stylet of the needle. Then you will ask another assistant who has been pre who is prepared with the universal container bottles Following this, replace the stylet with a piece of gauze, put some gentle pressure over the area and gently remove the needle. Hold the gauze over the affected area for 30 seconds and replace with some Mipor dressing. Following the procedure, it's important to check the patient with a focused clinical examination and review of the patient's observations. In this section, we will look at some common practical problems encountered during lumbar puncture and suggest some potential aids to help overcome these. Firstly, if you have inserted your, your needle, remove the stylet and no CSF is, is obtained. We suggest rotating the needle by 90 degrees and again by 90 degrees to see if CSF can be obtained. If this is successful, continue to obtain your collector samples in the universal containers as previously described. 
if the situation arises where the CSF sample cannot be obtained from removing the stylet, despite the two rotations, we suggest reinserting your stylet and gently removing the needle. Again, at this point, rotate twice to see if CSF can be obtained. And if this is unsuccessful, reinsert your stylet and again withdraw several millimeters. This may be a case where the stylet and needle were too deep and withdrawal has allowed CSF to flow appropriately. If you encounter resistance on insertion of the needle and the needle cannot be advanced further, the most likely obstruction is bone. We advised removal of the needle at this point and recommencing the procedure following identification of your landmarks. This will aid a less traumatic tap. If the situation occurs where you have inserted your lumbar puncture needle, removed your stylet and you obtain a frankly bloody sample, we suggest replacing the stylet and removing the lumbar puncture needle at this point, as it is highly likely to yield an uninterpretable or fully traumatic CSF sample. Now we will briefly look at a special investigation or test known as manometry. This investigation is often used to interpret opening pressures in, in appropriate clinical situations. We will demonstrate how to use the manometer. First off, again, in this, open it from its sterile pack and it comes in three parts, three-way tap and two connecting pieces. It's important to open up the taps of the three-way tap and connect it to the manometer appropriately. If you are measuring opening pressure, it is essential that you have an extra assistant to help with placing of the manometer. When the spinal needle is inserted and the CSF sample is obtained, remove the stylet and immediately attach the manometer to the end of the collection port ensuring that the three-way tap is closed to off to allow the CSF sample to gather in the manometer. Allow time for the CF sample to gather in the manometer and appropriately measure the opening pressure when this has stopped. Following measurement of your opening pressure, you can then adjust your three-way tap to collect the CSF sample in a universal container below. Following this, again you can turn it off, disconnect the manometer, reinsert the stylet and remove the lumbar puncture needle as demonstrated before. Following any lumbar puncture procedure, it is important to prescribe appropriate post-procedural analgesia for the patient. Following completion of the procedure, it is vital to document in the patient notes accordingly. We've come to the end of our simulated lumbar puncture video. We hope you've enjoyed it, picked up some useful tips and will help improve your approach to paediatric lumbar puncture. A very useful paper that we would recommend read it is attached in the link below, How to Use Lumbar Puncture in Children from Archives of Disease in Childhood, Education and Practice. Our team at SimEd have created two successful SIM-based training courses for paediatric LP and run annually in the Children's Hospital Belfast and with our colleagues in Alton Galvin Hospital in Derry. For more information for course dates or to give us some feedback on our video, get in touch with us on Twitter at SimEdRBHSC. We hope you enjoyed it and until next time, thanks. <laughs>